Hey guys, Tracker is one of the best ways to analyze any form of motion using a video camera and a computer. So I'm going to show you very briefly how to use Tracker to analyze projectile motion. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to have a video camera and you need to have something to film. One of the most important things when you set up a video camera to film something using Tracker, you really should try and use a tripod if possible. It's really important that the video is kept still, that it doesn't move left to right, because this will change the results and will change the, the data when you put it through Tracker. Another thing you need to be careful of is where you set up your camera. So make sure you place it in a position where it's at uh, 90 degrees or perpendicular to basically the direction that the object is traveling, and that it is pretty much centered on where the trajectory of your projectile or where the thing is traveling as well. Don't place it at an angle. Um, if you place it at an angle, this will cause a lot of parallax error, which will make your results really quite dodgy. Uh, another important point is try and use a camera that has a good frame rate. A lot of modern phones have frame rates of 120 frames per second and some even as high as 240 frames per second. The higher the frame rate, the better the accuracy will be. Okay, and last tip before we get started with Tracker is try and film somewhere where there's plenty of light. This will give you a crisper image that will give you better results when you do put your video into Tracker. Okay, so now we've got our video file on our computer. What we do is we open up Tracker and we import the file into Tracker. Okay, here I am selecting my video file. Sometimes you might get an error message like this. It doesn't usually cause any issues. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is we need to calibrate our video. So I'm gonna set the frame rate. For my video, it's 240 frames per second. And I also wanna set the start and end point. Now you can drag the little black triangles down the bottom on the video, or you can just type in the frame number. So my start frame is 68, and my end frame right here where it hits the ground is 205, maybe even 204. Okay, now what we need to do is add our calibration stick. So I have a ruler, which is 30 centimeters in my video. I'm zooming in on it here and then setting the start and end points by pressing control and click and setting the distance to 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. Now we need to set our Cartesian coordinates. So I'm dragging around the origin and just centering it so it's um, along the ground level there and you'll notice the y-axis passes through the center of the ball and that's so the start position in x is approximately zero. Now you can step the video back and forward by using the little clicky arrows or you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Now I'm just looking at the step size here. I don't want to have too many steps from when the ball is thrown to when it hits the ground. It will take me too long to analyze it if there are. Now that's looking pretty good. Basically, what it's essentially doing is reducing the frame rate, just making it a little bit easier to analyze. And now what I'm doing is I'm adding my points, data points. Now I'm doing this on the bottom of the ball. That's the part that's going to hit the ground and it's an easy reference point on the ball to click. So pressing shift and click, I'm adding that data point. Now you'll see that track has kept a track of all of those points and that's the bottom of the ball as it's moved through each step. And it's put that into a table for us and it's also grafted. Now we can change the number of graphs to display and if you click on the units, the axes on the side there, you can change what quantity your graph is displaying if you want some different graphs. You can also change what is in your table by clicking on table and then clicking here to add in a few extra quantities like I'm doing here. Acceleration in the X direction is useful because it shows you how accurate your results are considering for projectile motion it should be zero. You can also look at the acceleration of Y which should be about 9.8 and you can see it varies a little bit but it's not too bad. Now if you double click on a graph you can open up the analytics for it. Going to analyze and then to curve fits allows us to fit an equation to our graph that will allow us to do further analysis. So in this case here, we have a parabola. So clicking parabola and then we have the equation for the parabola. Now, if you equate this to the equation of motion, S equals UT plus a half AT squared plus C, you can see that 
the quantities C in this case should be the start height of our projectile. Okay, now to analyze the motion recorded in Tracker, we can use the info from our graphs, we can use the info in our tables, and we can look at the position of the projectile as it's moved through space and time. You can also export this information into Microsoft Excel to do further analysis in there if you prefer. Thanks for watching.